Hey guys, GW Berman here with a quick little video just kind of showing you what I was experimenting with a little bit today. Uh, this model here is uh, nothing super special. It's kind of cool looking, but it's just um, I started with the plane and I ran the quad panels plugin that's available at liberty3d.com. So uh, if you want to make some highly detailed looking objects pretty quickly, that's one good way to do it. Anyway, what's going on here is I just have uh, two objects in the scene. I have the the quad panels object, and uh, I also have the the plane. And somehow I need to bring my object back in. I'm using a space mouse, and I'm not used to it yet. And it seems like every time I try to use it, it somehow uh, changes orientation on me. <laughs> so hold on, let me get it back here. Okay, there we go. The lighting's wrong now, but oh well. Anyway, I have two objects. I have a plane and I have the quad panels. Right now, I'm moving the plane. You can see if the plane is above the quad panels, I'm getting essentially a depth map of the, the quad panels object. Let me lower that below the quad panels object. As you may have guessed, I'm actually using the new Raycast geometry node, only this time uh, as a surface texture rather than as a motion or deformation. So I have not seen it used in this way, although I'm sure it's probably been done by somebody else. OK, let's move the quad panels object around. I'll drop it down below. And you can see if I rotate it, I can also rotate the object. And you can see the depth panel updating in the VPR view on the left. So. There we go. Now it's set up with a certain with a 10 meter range, so anything below 10 meters it goes dark. There it's kind of halfway above it, so you can kind of get an interesting look. I haven't tried plugging this into like uh, transparency channels yet, but that could be some interesting stuff going on with that too. All right, so let's just reset that. And let's take a look at the node network I'd used for this. Really simple. Shift click on the VPR window to bring up the ground plane node editor or surface editor. And here's the nodes. I ran the uh, world spot out of the input. Or if you're, well, I'm not going to tell you how to do it in earlier versions of Lightwave 11.5 because they didn't have this Raycast geometry node. So anyway. Just plug the world spot into the ray origin and the distance into a gradient. And with the gradient, I have it set up to apparently right click instead of left click. I just don't. I'm using a laptop for this, and they can get annoying sometimes. So here's my gradient. I can actually tighten it up. I could, of course, you know, use different colors for different depths. And uh, let's throw a red in here and. Get rid of this. There. There's the red we're throwing in. I said red instead of green. I probably shouldn't talk and do this at the same time. Talk and demo at the same time. That doesn't work very well, though. Anyway, uh, in order to actually see what it's looking at, you need to tell it to look at the other object. So, yeah, the Raycast node needs to know what object you want it to be aware of. So that's basically it. And that just plugs into the diffuse shading. So yeah, I haven't quite figured out what uh, use this would be yet. I was thinking maybe some interesting uh, displays of some kind, because I seem to be obsessed with displays. But I don't know. But it's fun. It's a nice little video. So uh, there you go, uh, texture use for the Raycast Geometry Node. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Um, I try to put videos up once in a while, not as frequently as I used to, but, you know, whatever. I have some uh, tutorials that are more comprehensive, well thought out, and edited over at liberty3d.com. You can purchase those there, and that helps me out a great deal. So... Thanks for watching. Have a great day.